money in stocks, that's what I'm talking about. Equity in real estate is what I'm talking about. Equity in real estate is what I'm talking about. Perfecting the game, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So what are we talking about? All right, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Nige. It's Theo. I know you've, uh, well, maybe I don't know. <laughs> Some of you may have uh, uh, checked out our live stream. This was back in March of 2020. And uh, we did we did a cryptocurrency uh, video, a uh, live stream. And uh, it was fun. I learned a lot. It was more of like a super uh, beginner's course on crypto. Um, Theo's been telling me about it since like 2017. And I didn't believe in it. Um, and not that I didn't really believe in it. I just wasn't even trying to hear it. Um, and, uh, well, he made me uh, want to buy crypto, which was uh, Bitcoin. It was my first crypto in March of 2020. And it was about $8,000. Yeah. And uh, now, it, now it's gone up to, uh, well, almost 60, right? right? And uh, it's kind of hovering a little bit. It's been going crazy. It's at 51 right now. It, it's volatile. Um, but... Uh, you know, I want to learn a lot more. People ask me questions. Theo posts about it on his Instagram uh, all the time. So uh, the goal is to always share our our knowledge with with all of our people. And uh, you know, my description of, of of our people is just folks that don't have that didn't grow up with the financial education uh, that that some some did. And you know, if we educate ourselves. Uh, we can go further. That's a, that's a lot of the problems that we can we can uh, prevent for the future. And you know, I appreciate y'all staying with us. Uh, make sure that you have, if you haven't already, like, subscribe to uh, your boy Nige making moves on um, YouTube. Make sure you hit up Theo on Instagram. What's your Instagram again? Real name at Theo Blazer. Theo Blazer, baby. <laughs> All right, man. So we're gonna kind of get into it. Um, there's a few questions that we've gotten from Instagram that we're going to answer, but we're just going to shoot the shit and uh, continue um, to do these videos uh, to help educate ourselves and everyone else. Um, first of all, do we want to get into like what is crypto or do you want to skip that and go right into uh, the, like the first question that you get when people are interested? Uh We'll just kind of take a step back and, and, and instead of just asking, you know, what is crypto? It's like, what is money? Right? Mm. All right. So let, let's start because, or what is wealth? Right? And so what we're all trying to do, or I, I shouldn't speak for everybody, what, but what I'm trying to do is I, I'm trying to get to a position where I no longer have to trade my time for dollars unless I want to. Right? And so in order to do that, we need something called wealth. Right, so the difference between someone who's rich and someone who's wealthy is someone who's rich can buy things. Someone who's wealthy, uh, or wealth is measured in time, right? So how long can you support your current level of lifestyle without working, right? So are you 100 days wealthy? Are you 300 years wealthy, right? So so wealth is measured in time, where riches is, is me measured in money. That's a great question that people should ask themselves: is how rich are you? in days yeah how how long can you survive without counting on anyone else's money or, yeah. or getting income yeah so that so that's wealth right and and so that wealth provides freedom right and so you know some of you may know or may not know but i was in vacation ownership for a long time and so that's one of there's something called dominant buying motives right there's there's things that just human nature just drives and personal freedom is one of them Right, and so that's always been my biggest motivator. Is I want to be able to wake up when I want. I want to be able to do what I want. I want to be able to go where I want when I want to do it. Right, yep. and so in order to need that, you need you need wealthy, or you need wealth. Right, and so the reason why seventy eight percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and we don't have a thousand dollars in our savings accounts, isn't because we're uh we spend our money wrongly that's what they always say it's like oh you guys are consumers 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 yep. you just blow you blow you blow it's this we're getting bad information very right? true <laughs> if, if, right they say hey they say hey, earn money and then save it right yeah. but what does your savings accounts pay yeah right and, and so 
there's there's three rules when it comes to money. I'll just keep it real simple. First one, you got to learn how to get it. All right, that's the first rule is Nipsey, get out of here. How, how, do, how do I get this money, right? Am I going to breed French uh, French Bulldogs and sell them? <laughs> or, uh, that's how you might get shot doing that. Yeah, right? <laughs> Stealing out of people's backyards left and right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the first rule is get it. Second rule is keep it. And then the third rule is how do I multiply it, All right? And so that goes into how I got into cryptocurrency right is hey I, I i have this little bit of money but what's the fastest way for me to grow it and so at that time it, it was bitcoin right the the key to investing is you want to look for what's called undervalue assets right so it doesn't matter if you're flipping houses you want to buy that five hundred thousand dollar house for three hundred thousand dollars right so that bitcoin you know i wanted to buy a sixty thousand dollar bitcoin and at the time it was at thirty six hundred right everyone was saying don't buy bitcoin it sucks. It's horrible. It, it, so that's what's called a hated asset class. And that's usually you want to buy. It. That's usually when you want to buy that asset. So bought that asset. And time pays you in value. Right? So three years later, I bought it for 3600 And now it's trading right around between 50 and 60 grand a coin. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that was the third phase. So first phase, I learned how to get 3600 from my job. I kept it by putting it into Bitcoin and I multiplied it with time and value, right? And so that's kind of the uh, key to becoming wealthy. Yeah, I mean, that's a great way to start off uh, the conversation because, uh, you know, we hear a lot of language about, you know, make money, save money, but you can't save yourself to being wealthy. It, no one's ever done that. Uh, but what you need to do is make your money, make you money. Um, and that's where the internet goes crazy. If you go on Google or go on YouTube and put in passive income, um, it's, it's all the rage <laughs> these days. And it, it's, uh, it's the reality, man. You, you can't put money into a savings account or a shoebox, and it does not make money for you. Um, so that's, uh, that's really where the interest comes for me for, for cryptocurrency and stocks. Um, I've been in the stock market since I was 19 years old. And I'm like 400 years old now. Um, you know, I, I did well enough, but I didn't. I didn't educate myself. I let someone else do that for me. Um, a lot of it was with four. Originally was with 401k, and then IRAs, and then self-directed. And now, um, I guess we are where I am. What you call a, a retail investor, which means I do it all myself. I'm on an app, whether it's crypto or stocks, and that's what I'm doing. Um, you know, every day, and you can drive yourself pretty crazy. Uh, watching those uh, those tickers fly and uh, go up go down um, you got to learn to not be emotional about it uh, and really only invest money that that you're not afraid to lose it's just like going to uh, cash creek or the pepper mill you put the money in the slot or, or on the table and you know you can win or you can lose uh, but I think uh, like right now, since crypto and stocks, uh, well, I guess we'll stick to crypto for this this uh, video, but crypto, it's gone so crazy high, it doesn't matter what coin you're looking at. Um, the first question I have, that people have for me lately is, um, first of all, is it too late? Is it too late to buy crypto? Um, and then maybe we can move on to like some of your favorite apps buying crypto, because there's so many ways you can buy crypto. You can buy it on Robinhood, you can buy it on Weevil, but is that actually you purchasing crypto? Or do you own the coin? So there's a lot of questions that you could have um, when you get into it, which is intimidating. So um, what uh, what I say and, and, and what Theo has told me over, over the time is just put a little bit of money into it and uh, it's the money that you would have wasted anyways. The $5 you would have spent on a soda or some chips uh, just just slowly slowly buy in uh, and, and then educate yourself that way as well you can just anyone can play with five dollars um, if that's a lot of money for you put in two dollars there's no real limit for that so um, what would you say to someone if they said yo Theo I want to get into crypto man I heard it's hot I'm trying to make a lot of money uh, let's get rich off this shit man but is it is it too late yes and no 
right? So yes, as and if you're trying to make a lot of money next week, if you're trying to buy Bitcoin and, and have your sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin turn into two hundred and forty thousand dollar Bitcoin, that's not gonna happen, right? <laughs> But there's there's other coins, right? And you got to learn the market. So everything's in cycles, right? So just like how real estate has a 10-year cycle, yeah. Bitcoin or cryptocurrency has a four-year cycle. Mm -hmm. And so we're ending the, we're coming towards the end of that fourth year. And so we're on a bull run right now. So what I would recommend if I was getting started right now is the first thing you should always invest in is yourself, right? Because you can never take away that knowledge and that wisdom that you learn. So whether it's, you know, buying courses on investing, uh, following us, you know, that that's my first, my first recommendation is invest in yourself on learning what is an investment, right? How do I get started? The second thing is uh, Coinbase is the app I recommend for you at least to get started at. And the reason being is you don't need any money to get started. They have something called Coinbase Earn and they will pay you, I think it works out to be like a dollar a minute, but they end up paying you a dollar a minute in a cryptocurrency, and you watch these little, you know, one minute or three minute long videos, and it just teaches you about cryptocurrency. And so they pay, they literally pay you to learn. And so that's how I recommend it, especially if you don't have any money. It's like, uh, I think right now it's 50 bucks. If you watch all the videos, you get 50 bucks. And what's kind of crazy is, I started doing this three years ago. That's how I got into it. And those little dollars here and there, uh, I think my free account started at 50 and, and now it's up to like six or seven hundred dollars. Wow. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So don't, so don't knock the one dollar or the three dollar that they're, they're giving you. So that would be my, my first recommendation is, is start there. Yeah. And I mean, most of the, the, uh, the apps out there have free money to start with. My first uh, crypto app was CryptoCoin.com um, and you can get the app Android or uh, or, or app iPhone and uh, Theo sent me his link. Uh, I got a free, I think it was, at the time I think it was a free $50. Now I think it's 25 bucks. Uh, we'll put our links down below so you can get free money what, from whatever link it is. But I started with $25 in uh, March of 2020 and I kind of, I spent a couple of weeks learning about it, um, but that a few months later, <laughs> I looked in, I hadn't even checked on it, it was $200. Yeah. Now, is that going to happen for you? I don't know. Um, the likelihood of it jumping 3,000% like it did um, when I first got into it, when you first got into it, um, it maybe it's unlikely, I'm not sure, uh, but... The point is you got to get in there you got to try it and you got to play the game um and if you're not playing with your money what's the big deal at, at, at very least uh if you lose all the 25 or 50 dollars that they give you you still are not out any money um so i personally don't think it's it's a a bad time to get in i do think it's a bad thing to uh jump in be excited as if you're gambling and you're going to get rich i think you're you should kind of reel back the excitement turn up your uh, your want and need for education on the topic and use it actually to to make your like a, a i don't know like your emergency stash of cash more because you're leaving it in the bank yeah. you're losing money the the way that i i so I, I need to make everything a game and so what i did was whenever i wanted to buy something instead of me taking that you know let's say uh three hundred dollars to go buy a new pair of beats it was like all right i'm gonna put this three hundred dollars in the market and then when i turn that 300 into 600 i'm gonna go take that 300 and go buy my beats mm -hmm. or, or whatever it is that I, that I wanted and so that's that's how i got started was because remember the second rule is keep your money right so if i only got three hundred dollars i never want to go below mm -hmm. right but i want to buy things right i, I want to live right so that's that's the other thing I, uh, a lot of bad information that we get is if you listen to the Susie Ormans and the Dave Ramseys, no disrespect to them, but they're trying to have you live this horrible life, man. They're like, oh, don't go out to dinner. Don't buy Starbucks. Yeah. It's like, yes and no, right? It's like, if I want my, my refresher, man, from Starbucks, I'm, I'm going to spend the three up, three twenty five. dollars <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. also, on the other hand, is you don't ever want to buy anything that's worth more than you. 
right? So if you don't own at least three dollars worth of stocks, then you have no business buying a three dollar Starbucks. Amen to that. Right. That that is for real. It and, and that's one thing that uh, we're never taught. Um, and when I say we, just any anyone that that has never had financial education for the family, um, if if you if you're buying something and you use it all the time, you should probably own the stock. You should own a portion of that business. Um, you know, moving forward, just kind of keeping it in the in the the lane of crypto. Um, just getting in the game now. It's still not too late because what what do they say the oh. statistics what two two percent of the population the world population even knows about crypto yeah so when i say yes and no is the no part is yeah only two percent of the people have been exposed to cryptocurrency or, or blockchain technology so asking like hey is it too early to invest is, is kind of the best analogy is if you remember aol <laughs> yeah. right or when amazon first came out it's like that that's where we're at in, in the scheme of things we're it's just getting to the public, right? And so it's it's not too late yet, but just like in order for it to be an opportunity of a lifetime, you have to take advantage of the opportunity in your lifetime. So the window is closing and hop in, you know what I mean? Hop in and start learning. Yeah, yeah, I, I really do like the, what I do like about the hype uh, is you know, there's a lot of retail apps, which we're, we're called retail investors. I know I've said this uh, in other videos, but a, what is a retail investor? That's actually what Wall Street calls stupid money. So the stupid money um, is folks that didn't go to school and don't work uh, in finance and, and, and are not trading um, within the hedge fund or, or paying a brokerage to, to run their, their finances. Uh, but just last year or the year before there was not that many retail investors we are now 20 percent of the uh free market investment in the free market whether that's crypto or or stocks yeah which is is phenomenal i love it um i talk to people all the time and at first they're not that interested they see stuff on facebook instagram on tv youtube they kind of get the itch they want to know um how to get in and uh, you know, I sent them a link. They download the link, whether it's it's uh, Weeble or Crypto.com. You're getting free money, and they start to to learn about it. Uh, but they're afraid to put their own money in uh, once once they get the account because they're like, well, what should I buy? And and that's exactly uh, what I'm trying to figure out every single day. Theo and I talk almost every single day. Um, like today, we're you know ADA is a coin that's that's been going crazy. Um, uh, Bitcoin has been going crazy up and down. Ethereum, all these coins, we kind of run back and forth why we think it's going to do what it's going to do. We really don't know. You kind of got to keep doing the research, but it's the same thing with stocks. Just do your research. Spend five dollars. Spend five hundred dollars. Whatever it is that you can afford to technically lose. Just drop it in there and just play the game. Um, there's a lot of information on uh, YouTube or even on the sites. So even if you go to uh, Coinbase or Crypto.com, they have uh, education centers. Weeble has education centers. All you have to do is click it, watch a video, read an article. Um, but I would also, uh, I was speaking to my wife today. She she's um, been getting excited about it too. Got her an account. Uh, but again, she's afraid to to uh, purchase something, and I told her what you need to do is do your research, find something that you think may work, and let's do our research. Um, but today, it kind of brought me back to you got to be careful where you get your information because on Weeble there is an ability to leave comments like uh, like uh, social media almost, and people put a lot of clickbaity stuff. People put a lot of misinformation. There's also uh, ratings that people can can say whether it's a, a bullish or bearish or a buy or a sell and she said look this says buy and this says buy as well well the information was on two ratings so when, when you see 50% um, of the people that come in say buy or 100% of the people want to say buy uh, be very careful because it, it's very small writing that there was only two, two people, people that said that <laughs> we we talked about that uh the other day we're like oh shit 
the shit's on fire, and I'm like, wait a minute. No, there's a, that's only one rating. <laughs> yeah, only, only one person said that. Yeah, it's like the Yelp or Google of uh, um, of stock uh, comments. Right. <laughs> so that so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because there's two things that I recommend for everyone is I you can learn and watch all the YouTube videos and but the map is not the train. And, and what I mean by that is once you actually start doing it. It's a lot different than, than what you read about, right? Yeah. And and so just do it. The other thing about losing quote unquote money is that's the first problem. So going back to what I was saying is like what is money? It's like, well, if you're measuring dollars do not exist. And what I mean by that is if I gave you a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? and you needed something to eat, mm-hmm. and you couldn't go anywhere, and you were just trapped in this backyard, how useful is that $100,000 to you? <laughs> it's not. Right? And so money is just a, a physical, it's a currency, right? So let's go back to the word. So money is called currency. Mm-hmm. And currency comes from the word current, right? And so money needs the flow, right? So that's why you hear something called cash flow. So yep. when you when you buy a house and rent it out, or the profit you made from the business, that's... That's your cash flow. So it's a currency. We got this cash flow. And so money needs to circulate. Mm -hmm. Right? My ADD kicked in and I kind of forgot where I was going. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey, it don't matter. So where you were, where you were going is, is you're talking about like, what is money is it's not even real. There, There you go. So you got this currency. And so we used to have a barter system, right? So if I raised chickens and, and Nigel built houses. It was like, hey, hey, Nigel, I'll, I'll give you 60 chickens for a house. And Nigel's like, what am I going to do with 60 chickens, man? I, <laughs> I I need some eggs, or not eggs, but I need some milk, you know yeah. what I mean? Or I need a cow. And, and so the barter system got away and we came up with this thing called money or currency, right? So it started with cattle and then it turned into coins and then it turned into dollar bills and then now we all use debit cards and credit cards mm-hmm. but now we just buy everything on the internet and so the money's just changing to digital right so that's yep. how bitcoin comes into play so the currency just keeps trading and so the reason why it's called a currency is it's also energy right when you go to work you get a paycheck and that paycheck's called an income right mm-hmm. so you got an income but what did your work get your work got your outcome right you got your outcome from the fruits of your labor, right? You, you put this energy into your company, they got your outcome, you get the income, and now we call it money. So currency or money is just, it's like inches or a ruler, it's just, it's how we measure value. So people buy stocks or they buy Bitcoin and they're like, oh, I, I, I you know, why do you buy Bitcoin? It's like, oh, because, you know, the dollars being mass printed, right? I don't know if you guys know this or not, but 20% of all dollars in circulation today were printed last year, right? So yeah. what that means is if you have $100, uh, if you had $100 in 2019, by the end of 2018, that $100 now will only buy you $80 worth of stuff, mm-hmm. right? Because now there's $120, let's say, in circulation. And so your purchasing power went down. And so that's what happens when you value dollars, right? So when I tell people like, hey, Bitcoin isn't really worth $50,000. Bitcoin is worth a Bitcoin. Yes. But your dollar is so weak, it takes $50,000 to buy that Bitcoin. Or it takes $300 or $800 to buy that share of Tesla. Or it takes $800,000 to buy that house is the house isn't really worth eight hundred thousand dollars the house is worth the house right but you're measuring it in dollars Mm -hmm. so if you go to india and you buy a house in india it's like oh this this house is 10 million rupees (laughs) right it's like well how much is a rupee compared to a dollar right so you got it that's why i always post if you change what you value your value will change yeah Right, and so start valuing assets over dollars, right? Because I promise you one thing, that the New York Stock Exchange and Coinbase and all these uh, apps and exchanges, you have to be very successful just to be able to get listed on them. And so as long as you buy it and wait, chances of it going up is is more likely than not, right? If you bought Coca-Cola 10 years ago, Coca-Cola was on an all-time high 10 years ago. 
but Coca-Cola is worth more today than it was 10 years ago. Yep. And I can do that for almost any company. Yep. Yep. And, and that actually, <laughs> a funny point, it brings up a funny point. We talked about the other day when, when the folks that, I mean, no offense to anyone that's vegan, but the crypto crazies are like vegans. Like I remember having this, uh, this investor, he bought all this, this crypto and he's like, Naj, I don't know why you, you know, you don't dump more money into this. Um, you know, that the fiat currency is going away. It's going to be a cashless society and yada, yada, yada. Um, all my Bitcoin, I got $150,000 in Bitcoin just from what I invested. I'm like, you seem real excited for the value of your Bitcoin in dollars when you told me fiat currency is going away. So, right. so, <laughs> and we both started dying laughing because he was like on a tangent. He was losing it. And I'm just, I'm just standing there listening to him thinking, this dude is really on my helmet about dollars versus crypto. He's right. Fiat currency really doesn't mean anything. $100 in 2019 is $80 in 2020 and so on and so forth. Um, but it's just so funny to me that none of this is really tangible. Uh, it's all based on perceived value. So we live in the Bay Area. The perceived value for our 1,500 square foot single story home on a lot that's, uh, a, I don't know, we'll call it like a, a, a eighth of an acre mm -hmm. is eight hundred fifty thousand dollars and you still need to fix it up that's a perceived value here in the bay area right that house isn't really worth that you can take cash out in, in with a refi cash out versus what you owe so your loan to value and take if you owe two hundred thousand you can take five hundred thousand dollars out of that house and have five hundred thousand dollars right right if you went to another like well like the state of texas Eight hundred fifty thousand dollars is gonna buy you. You can live next to Mark Cuban. Right? <laughs> I mean, obviously that's exaggerating, but but you all out there know know what I mean. And it's all in perceived value. So if crypto is perceived to have a high value, or if a home is perceived to have a high value, that's that's your wealth, and that's. Uh, but it's all an asset. So so owning the asset is the key. It's never really the perceived value in a currency right it's the perceived value in that asset itself and i know that probably was a long way of explaining yeah. something but owning assets like like theo was saying is the key you can have a, a yard full of old rusty cars that don't run that are technically worthless because what does a, a car or a truck do it's for transportation but all it takes is uh, a handful of people or, or one person to say that one rust bucket is super rare in their opinion and now it's worth a million dollars because it's the one of one it's all perceived value so that just goes back to what i was saying earlier right is if you invest in yourself right and you develop the skills to recognize a hated asset right so to you it's a rusty car yep to the skillful mechanic and car collector that's a million dollars yes right and so that you can use that analogy for anything yep so um and to simplify what what i just shared with you is assets are your real savings account mm -hmm. right so instead of putting 300 dollars in your savings account it was like in march if you would have had 300 dollars worth of toilet paper when toilet paper was sold <laughs> yeah. out it was selling for 60 dollars a roll on ebay right yeah. <laughs> clorox wipes yeah. I mean, you name it yeah so <laughs> thing so i bring that up because i i'll keep investing real simple if you only invest in things that have real use and value like a house right like uh like a cow right i don't know how much cows cost but i know a, a cow is probably more expensive today than it was the beginning of the uh, of this great coronavirus right <laughs> yeah right and it's because we need to eat right so once again that's why if you ever hear like cash is trash or, or money is worthless it is but it isn't yeah right so when you just save it just saving cash you're actually losing and so the reason why bitcoin is becoming the number one investment for hedge funds and brokers is because they're printing so much money 
is the the Federal Reserve will tell you, hey, cost of living only goes up two or three percent. But if you are a real person and you go into the supermarket or you go to the gas station, it's like gas is a lot more expensive than five cents or ten cents. You know, it's it's a dollar higher. You know, yeah. I used to pay five bucks a pound for ground beef and now I'm paying 10 bucks, right? So that so that's the real in, inflation right there. It's about 15%. And so the reason why hedge funds are moving into this is because for the next five years, inflation is gonna be projected to be at 15%. So if your money is not growing at least by 15% a year or more, You're in losing. five years, half your money is gone. Yes. So that $80 that you had today, that was $100 last year, five years from now is 40 mm -hmm. in purchasing power, right? You still have that $100 bill, but that $100 bill is now only buying you $40 worth of value, right? So that's what I mean by buying assets is the real savings account mm -hmm. is because, you know, whether it's, I don't want you guys to go out there and buy Rolexes, right? But <laughs> if you buy a Rolex, that's better than you having just $8,000 sitting in your checking account or your very, savings account. Very true. Very true, because the again the perceived value is going to go up, and just like in the stock market, it's always gone up. It has crashed, um, but uh, it always goes up. Um, real quick, real go quick, ahead. not to interrupt you. For all you go people ahead. out there buying jewelry, just so you know, the real reason why rappers and all these people buy jewelry or rich people for two reasons: one, tax evasion. Okay, the second one is bringing money into countries, right? If you wanted to bring 10 million of cash into London on an airplane, that shit's gonna get seized. But if you have a $10 million chain or a $100,000 chain, you can wear that, fly there, sell it to the jeweler and get your money. So all you guys watching these rappers buy this jewelry, or even if you're a rapper yourself buying this jewelry, you don't understand why they're doing it. Yes. <laughs> That's why they're doing it, man. If you ever met Ivan the jeweler, he's the biggest Russian mafia dude you'll ever meet. And he got into selling jewelry to clean the Russian mob's money. All right. So that's why wealthy people buy art and jewelry is to avoid taxes. Right. Because when you buy a stock and sell that stock, you got to pay tax on capital gains. Yep. Right. And so the level that you wear or wear all that, you know. If I make $100,000, I pay like 1500 bucks in taxes, right? But now let's say I'm Bill Gates and I'm making $100 million. Now I'm paying $15 million in taxes. That, that's a big difference. So he's going to buy a piece of artwork worth $80 million, let that appreciate. And then um, what Nigel brought up earlier is you take the equity out, mm -hmm. right? So you never sell. Whenever you sell something, you have to pay tax on it. But if you buy a, a true asset that a value appreciates, you can take a loan out. You take mm -hmm. the loan out, and now you have access to that equity and that cash flow. You don't have to pay tax on it. The interest is a write-off. And even though you have this payment, technically you're just paying yourself back. Yep. So that's yep. the key right there. It is. And that's, uh, that's why I'm so heavy on real estate. Um, a lot of people... Um, right now are like yo the real estate market's a bubble it's gonna pop uh the the value of houses are way too high i guess that's true and uh you know when you brought up someone like dave ramsey who's uh essentially telling people how not to become wealthy by just saving um and paying cash for everything uh you know in my opinion cash isn't king especially not anymore it used to be cash is king but everything is, you know, every every transaction is tracked now, and that's why crypto was big because of, uh, you know, uh, monitoring transactions. But back to real estate, when you have an asset like real estate, people are always going to need to live somewhere. Um, you actually get tax credits for owning real estate, for being a landlord, providing uh, housing for people, which is really really awesome. And as it appreciates and you pay down the mortgage that you're getting tax breaks for, that money is technically yours. So if you ever want to cash it out, pull some money and, yes, sir. I got the mortgage for you. You what? Oh, cool, man. Hey, that's funny. <laughs>
Thanks, sir. There you go. Appreciate you. You too. Look, man, this is what happens when you do you do videos at home, man. You get the neighbor uh, bringing over oranges. I love it. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to it. That money that you pull out um, from from your uh, your cash out, you can use it to buy things, pay off debt if you really want to. Uh, but it's always recommended to buy more assets. So if you use your first house to buy your second house, buy your by the time you hit your fifth house, it's usually your dream home. So when, when I'm helping people make a purchase, I'm telling people how to kind of dumb down their expectations a little bit and um, to, to realize that your dream home is about five homes away. Unless you're already independently wealthy or you have family with money. But I really do like the idea of being able to use an asset to purchase more assets. And you know, we're talking about cryptocurrency today. We're, we're gonna be talking about the stock market the next time. We're gonna continue to talk about, talk about uh, real estate, um, every kind of asset. Uh, but the biggest asset, as Theo touched on earlier, is you. You know, that's why I'm so excited that 20% of the, of the free market in, in trading now is within retail investors like us, that means people are actually paying attention, putting time into themselves and learning more and more, uh, which is incredible because everybody wants the government to fix the wealth gap. Don't, don't expect anyone to fix anything of yours. So what right, well, you need so to do is fix yourself. Let's say, on, let's say on that, right? So as I get more educated about how to make money, I understand why rich people don't like taxes so much. So <laughs> what I realized is the government doesn't have any money. <laughs> no. All they do is they take the money from someone else and they give it to you. And so that's why the, the government, that's called communism, right? Communism is like, hey, the government's going to make everyone wealthy. And so they take shit from everybody and then allegedly they dispose it evenly, right? So if you want to see how that worked out, Cuba, you know what I mean? Go to Cuba, mm -hmm. go to Cuba and see that they still have cars from 1960. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They with, get a, boat, with boat motors. With boat motors, <laughs> yeah. Just the, the reason why they get married and divorced so much is because every time they get, every time they get a hundred dollars every time they have a wedding, right? Yep. And it's like, oh, you want a new pair of shoes? It's like, all right. We gonna break up, girl. I love you. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna go get with homegirl across the street because I need some new shoes, right? And and so Pitbull just just released a great video um, about that, right? Because he escaped from Cuba and he came here and he said, "Hey, the the reason why I love America so much is I came from a place where we didn't have opportunity and you had to be so hungry." that as soon as you got a little sliver, it was like, that was your only chance. And if you missed that sliver, it's like, you're not getting shoes for five years. Wow, right? that's and, incredible. And so he came here and he's like, man, there's all this opportunity. And uh, for y'all who know me, I'm, I'm a little conspiracy minded. And so <laughs> something that I, I love that he brought up is, I know it's supposed to be about cryptocurrency, but this is all about thought process, right? Yeah. And so what he said, he's like, man, I don't care if it's Corona or Ebola or this or that. He said, I see them, talking about the media, doing the same thing that Castro did in Cuba, except they doing it with a virus. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know how pissed Castro is right now? Yeah. He's like, they took over the world with a virus? Yeah. He's like, I had nukes pointed at the United States of America, and they did it with a virus, right? So not saying that it's not real and it's not deadly. It absolutely is. But once again, we're getting bad information, yeah. right? So China, where this all started from, is all up and running, 100%. Economy's booming. The reason why I, I tie that all back around is because China is the world leader right now when it comes to digital currency. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you hear so much news about China right now, right? Everyone's like, oh, China this, China that. It's like, well, because China's winning the currency game. And yep. The currency game is going from fiat to digital. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're ahead of the game. And so yep. that's why their stocks are doing well. So... Just so you guys know, AMC is owned by the Chinese, right? So that's why AMC got so much kind of uh, 
publicity. Publicity in that in that Reddit or that bet Wall Street's bets mm-hmm. is because here we are Americans driving up this Chinese owned company. I'm not saying that's bad, but if you're the American government in a currency war right now, they don't want that going on. Yeah. Right. So that's also part of the reason why um, Robin Hood and these other uh, companies shut down trading on AMC mm-hmm. uh, along with other stocks is we're in a currency war right now. So just like how back in the days we used to fight wars man to man, it's like now uh, wars are Digital kind of wars. In, that's digital warfare right yep. now. And it's the battle of the currency. What's going to win? Is it going to be the digital yuan mm-hmm. or is it going to be the digital dollar? Yep. And so the way to get into any market when you're learning is called dollar cost averaging. So every week I do Fridays. Yep. Every Friday, I just put the same amount of money into the market, and you just let time be your friend, all right? Yep. And so, just so you guys know, I was sharing with uh, Nigel that there's these certain maximums that I live by, and whether they're true or not, they're, they're true for me. Mm-hmm. And one of them is, you can't cheat time. No. It, it's, it, it's whenever you try to cheat time in life... Right, so I don't care if you're trying to make a fast buck. I don't care if you're trying to get buff and you take steroids. I, it's like whenever you're trying to cheat time, it may work in the short run, but in the long run, you you lose everything, right? Or those muscles get deflated, or it, it just just something always goes wrong in the long run. So mm-hmm. I took that and I applied that to investing. I said, yep. hey, I'm not trying to get the fast buck. I don't want to get rich quick. I want to get rich for sure. Yep. Right. I want to be wealthy for sure. I want to know that, hey, you know what? In the next eight years, I might be, you know, quote unquote, broke or struggling. But at the end of those eight years, I'll never have to work again. And so that's what I recommend for everyone is just kind of keep your main thing the main thing. Get the money. Keep the money. Grow the money. And don't let the daily fluctuations discourage you. Because like I said, Coca-Cola 10 years ago mm-hmm. was worth less than it is today so if you would have bought coca-cola amazon tesla any of these big stocks facebook google just common sense yep. right then you're more likely going to succeed or not yep so that's a great point the long game play the long game don't worry about the short game uh you know don't don't worry about making a quick buck uh, we both had we've t- we've had uh stories shared back and forth where we told somebody to you know or not told but helped them get into investing whether it's stocks or crypto um and they're like yo right on for the advice but i only made ten dollars or i only made 600 bucks or i only made 50 bucks and i'm like bro you you did that like two weeks ago or 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 a day ago what are you talking about like oh man i invested now i lost like twenty dollars like it, it'll rebound like what what do you what are we, what are we talking about here because right. someone like myself i'll go to the restaurant and blow $300 on dinner without crying about it, but I can't blow $300 on crypto or, or stocks like that. It doesn't match up. And if you're trying to get in the game and make a quick buck, like Theo was, was going on about it, it, it doesn't make sense. So let's, let's baby step it first, uh, with the dollar cost averaging. Um, and let's, let's not worry about how much money in quantity you're making or losing in the short term. Let's make it a long game. And that's really what you need to be doing because during that long process, the journey is you learning. You're, you're, you're learning yourself and you're learning um, about whatever, whatever it is that you're, you're investing in. There's, there's assets galore and the biggest asset is you. You need to make sure that, uh, that you educate yourself. I tell people that all the time. They're like, hey man, I, I wanna make more money. How do I make more money? What should I invest in? What should I do? Invest in yourself. If you're not the best already at what you do, that means you're sleeping. That means you're slacking. And um, Theo came in with uh, with his revelation from driving here um, about applying all of those uh, those skills to every. Like, if you're successful at one thing, that means you can be successful at a lot of things. But you have to apply those same principles. That's why we're very wealthy people. Um, have a routine they say the wealthiest people in the world read x amount of books every day they they have a a workout routine they have a health routine as far as for their diet 
Um, and they, they even have an alarm to go to sleep, not just to, to wake up in the morning. Yeah. So you can apply that to anything. Yeah. So that's going into discipline, right? It's like, how bad do you want it? And so Warren Buffett, the reason why he's the most successful investor is because he reads 60 hours a week of business statements. So just looking at companies' financials, this is how much money they made in January, this is how much money they made in February, right? 60 hours, does that sound fun? No, right? <laughs> Not to me. But he does that 60 hours a week on hundreds of companies, and so now you factor in years, right? He's on that for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And so now he's read so many companies' financial sheets that when he sees one, he's like, this is the golden nugget, mm -hmm. right? And so you just got to put in discipline. You know what I mean? Everyone always says like, oh man, I don't want to read. It's like, dude, I'm not talking about what you want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, I don't like going number two, but we got to do it. You know what I mean? I hate wiping. I feel dirty afterwards. Usually take a shower, right? But we got to do it. So that's so real, right? Well, that that's why uh, when when people ask me what I like, what type of music I listen to, uh, I don't really listen to very much music. My my daily routine, I get up an hour and a half before I have to be at the office and I do 15 minutes of meditation um, and then after that it's all financial education so it doesn't even have to be something that I'm interested in at that moment if I want to learn something especially if you're on YouTube I'm not a I'm not excellent at reading I actually have a dyslexia so reading is very difficult for me but once I hear something I process it very well and then I can actually teach other people um, pretty well with with my education so every single day I'm on YouTube I'll listen to something new every single day so if I'm spending an hour and a half every day soaking up new information I can't lose when when you're on a commute don't let you don't need really need to, to listen to music your hype song should be how you can make more money without making money um, and I get it, it might not be everyone's interest but Warren Buffett reads 60 hours a week. I put that same amount of time in audiobooks or videos to learn just to get better. And I, it's not about getting money, it's about keeping money. So um, I think that's something that you should, should look, look into. Again, investing in yourself that costs no money at all. Well, let's go back to that, right? So that, that's always a, another thing we got to lie to about is... They say, hey, you can be anything you want in life. But uh, as you get older, they're like, oh, man, you can't be that. How are you going to pay the rent? Yeah. Well, you, oh, you want to be an artist? Uh, that's nothing to pay the bills, right? Yep. And so that that's the conflict. The first half of life, they say, hey, you can be anything you want. And then as you get older, they start telling you, like, hey, that's not real, right? Dim your light. Get, shoot for something reasonable. <laughs> yeah. So here, here, here's the thing. you got to find three passions in life. Right? The three passions you need to find is one, to make you money. If, you, if you're passionate about it, right? the best story I ever heard was this guy who became a doctor, spent a million dollars getting his doctor degree. His second year, hated being a doctor. You know what he loved doing? He loved snowboarding. Quit being a doctor, just started snowboarding. Was snowboarding his whole life, he was really good at it. One day he was going down the slope and this guy asked him and said, hey, you're really good at snowboarding. I suck. I want to learn and get good at it. Will you teach me? He said, yeah, sure. That guy ended up being a billionaire. Ooh. Right? And so as long as you do something enough to get good at it, someone will pay you or someone will watch you to do that. So just find something that you're passionate about and stick to it. Right? I, I was... I. I've been passionate about finances and currencies, right? And, and so I've, I've stuck to it my, my whole life. Like something my mom pointed out to me was, Theo, you've been trading stocks on paper since eighth grade. And that's true. In my eighth grade math class, we had to do a three month uh, project on trading stocks on paper. And ever since then, I've been trading stock on paper. And it took me from, let's say that's 98. It took me from 1998 to 2017 for me to actually pull that trigger for the first time because you know you watch movies like the wolf of wall street mm -hmm. and uh 
I have Wall Street. It's kind of funny how that one saying the same name, right? <laughs> Greed is good. Gordon Gecko. Uh, what's what's the other one? Fuck you, mom and dad, as you pay their Lexus bill. Oh, I don't remember that. Oh man. Uh, anyways, you watch all these movies about stockbrokers, and it's like, oh, they're making millions and billions, and yeah, you know what I mean. What am I going to do with my little ten dollars, or yeah. my hundred dollars, or five hundred dollars? And that's part of the bad information. Yeah, that's them selling you on not investing in that opportunity. Because the way that one thing starts are the way that all things start. And mm-hmm. when you see a tree, that tree didn't start that way. Right? It started as a little seed in the dirt, in the grime, with the worms and the dead bugs, and it had to grow. Right? Yep. And so it's the same thing that it'd be with whatever you do in life. Whether it's your investing career, whether it's your job career, or starting a family or a relationship is every day. It's going to get grown stronger, but you got to stick to it. So if you always stop and quit, stop and quit, it's like that. those are those little trees, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And so find something that you're passionate about, stick with it, and become yeah. good at it, and you'll be able to earn value, whether yeah. it's dollars or Bitcoin. I think, um, and, and uh, hopefully you don't mind, like, I think 2017, your, your actual trigger pulling uh, so to speak, uh, began with um, having a uh, a large windfall of uh, of finances because of an unfortunate uh, scenario where your house burned down, yeah. um, and you have this money. And I'm on the phone with him like, "Yo, man, there's this place you dump your money. It's a savings account, and at the time they were paying like what was it, five percent? Yeah, five percent. It was ridiculous. I think it was like five and a quarter percent." on just leaving your money and it was an online bank, which obviously no one wants to trust an online bank because what are they doing with my money? <laughs> but the reality is put 500 K into your local bank down the street, go back tomorrow and try to pick it up. Yeah. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> they don't really have your money. Um, but, um, he said his money in there and we were both talking over there like, damn, we made hell of money just leaving our money in here. And it just kind of, just kind of went from there like we're trying to save our money and put it somewhere where it's making just a just a little bit of money um and it was fun to us okay. and, and when we were talking about you go to your local bank i mean it could be a chase or a travis credit union you're making like 0.0001 percent on the money that they're lending out on personal loans that are 20 percent on car loans that are six percent they're making all the money so why are we leaving our money in there so moving that money into something like stocks or crypto there's safe ways to do it there's coins that really don't fluctuate uh, you got stable coins let's go back to crypto right yeah so we got stable coins so if i was going to invest right now you want to invest in infrastructures right so if we're betting on blockchain and bitcoin succeeding mm-hmm. then you want to buy the picks and the shovels in the road right and yep. so the big space in bitcoin are going to be currencies NFTs, which stand for non-fungible tokens, yep. and DeFi, um, decentral financing, the new banks. And so stable coins are going to be the new dollars. Non-fungible tokens are how we're going to take real world assets like a house or a cow or a stock, and we're going to turn it into this digital token, and we're going to sell it online. So 10, 15 years from now, you won't really need a physical, when you're ready to sell your house, 15 years from now, you won't need to have a buyer on the other end. There's just gonna be a pool of money that says, oh, you no longer want this house? All right, well, the market values it at 500,000, so just throw your house in this pool and we'll give you 500,000 instantly, right? So that's, that's the power of cryptocurrency, is it makes everything liquid instantaneously Mm -hmm. right so that's the problem with the house is how many people trying to sell a house right now and if they don't have a buyer it's just it's just sitting there right and so that's how digital currencies are going to change the game and that's going to be with everything right the stock market right now is only open uh, if you're on the west coast between the hours of of 6 a.m and 1 p.m yeah right if you're trying to make a trade after those hours it's like it's closed yeah well cryptocurrency is 24 hours right there's because it, it it doesn't take an employee to run. <laughs> it's all contracts, right? So there's a coin called Ethereum. And it's the number of two coin in the market. So if I was going to buy a coin, 
I would just buy an order that the market values, right? So they value Bitcoin number one. So if I have a thousand dollars, I'm going to put half my money into Bitcoin, right? And then they value Ethereum number two. So, you know, I'm going to take the other 25%, say, and, and throw it into Ethereum. So now 75% of my money is locked into the, the top two most successful companies. Mm -hmm. And now my other 25%, it's I'll, I'll play with you know what i mean I'll, I'll throw a little bit into into litecoin or into ada or you know into these uh smaller market caps yep. uh, but my five favorite picks are bitcoin ethereum ave polka dot uh and chain link and crypto.com is like <laughs> crypto.com cro is yeah is. cro is like tied with number five and number six that that's the sleeper and yeah. the reason why i don't really recommend it is it doesn't have the hype of all these other coins yeah but that's also why it's my favorite it's the hated asset right now. yep it's not it doesn't fluctuate in in thousands in of dollar uh fiat um in seconds right i mean you're talking pennies but who cares the penny is more than you made yesterday. Just let it let it go. Long game, long game, long game. I mean, back to so NFTs, non fungible tokens. Uh, we were talking about earlier. This is why wealthy people they hate taxes, and this is why wealthy people buy assets. Well, something that has come back, and, and Gary Vee has been really uh, big on this. Is um, is uh, Trading like cards, but yeah, trading cards like baseball cards, basketball cards. Um, but the the there's non fungible tokens that are artwork. So you've got anything from a trading card to a, another piece of art. There's a really uh, I heard about this uh, artist that um, they wanted to put together a um, art gallery, but it was a blockchain art gallery. So what they did was they digitally displayed things for this art gallery and they were they licensed it and they were paid in cryptocurrency yeah. which um it, it, it was uh, i believe it was some form of uh it was ethereum so they wrapped the artwork in ethereum with this sounds really crazy so any any <laughs> let, let, let me I'll, I'll, see, help me out here here's my know. skill so I'll, I'll make it real simple so ethereum is what's called a smart contract right so right now we have paper contracts and let's say i say hey nigel i'm gonna buy your your coffee cup for you for for 10 bucks right at baywarrior.com right <laughs> and but let's say i'm a let's say i'm marshall's or not marshall's I, uh barnes and pottery right uh, pottery barn pottery <laughs> barn thank you you know what i mean I'm from the ghetto, if you all can't tell. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's say we go to the Pottery Barn, right? I'm the Pottery Barn. I say, hey, I'm going to buy 10,000 of your Don't Be a Little Bitch mug. He sends me the mugs, and he sends me an invoice, right? And now, something you don't know, or maybe you do or you don't, but a lot of these companies don't ever pay back their invoices, no, right? And so, now I got this paper contract that I have to go to court, and I have to hire a lawyer, and I got to sue them. And if Nigel's got a bigger bank account than I have, chances of me winning that lawsuit are, are slim to, to none, right? And so Ethereum, with it being a smart contract, it, it takes the trust factor out. And so it's called trustless. So now I call Nigel. I say, hey, I want 10,000 of you don't be a little bitch mugs. He says, cool. He sends me a smart contract. And the smart contract is programmed and says, hey, when FedEx drops that box off and they scan it and says you received it, we're going to put these funds in this bank account that neither one of us have access to. And as soon as FedEx scans that barcode, that money is going to go from that bank account into my bank account. Boom. Right? So I don't need to trust Nigel that he's going to pay me. I don't need to trust Nigel that he's going to send me his cups. Right? Is because everything's going to be tracked digitally. Right? Mm -hmm. So he puts those cups in a box. FedEx scans it, I get a little notification saying hey, it's on my way, and then I deposit my funds into the checking account, right? And as soon as I receive it and confirm confirmation, then the checking account will release the funds into Nigel's checking account. Yep. And so that's gonna cut out most middlemen for almost everything. And so the reason, the big thing between NFTs is now imagine doing that with your music, 
Yep. Right? Every time you make a song, you don't have to trust SoundScan to make sure that they're paying you correctly. You don't have to trust uh, Apple Music or Spotify, Tidal, right? You don't have to rely on any of these third-party apps to, to pay you, mm -hmm. and you get to set your own price. It it's, it's, uh, allows us to be the next, uh, and, and if we're talking music, the next uh, Master P, uh, the next E-40, the next Too Short, because they were uh, intelligent enough to build their brand and not have a middleman. They, they had the assistance of uh, record labels for distribution, which I think is still gonna gonna continue, but they got most of their money. So without having to go through a person, through a person, through another person to collect your funds from your sales, you automatically know. So if they're wrapping their album in Ethereum or you know a, a non fungible a, a non -fungible token, token uh, of some sort, they're gonna get their money, they're gonna be able to track it and it'll be instant. And, and that's where I think going back to us fixing our own wealth gap, it allows us to eliminate people that can, I guess for lack of a better term, um, trick us into not getting all of our money. Right. Because what happens when, when a basketball player, and I'm using them as an example because they get the largest uh, paid contracts, they, they've never seen money before, they've never had large sums of money, and what do they do? They immediately go trust some random person that says that they're a manager or, or a financial advisor and they give them all the money. And, and then next thing you know, five years into it, they're broke and they owe taxes. You're like, wait, wait, wait a minute. So Theo gets a contract for $150 million. I've never, never met him before. And he gives me all of his money. Shoot, if I'd known Theo for 20 years, he ain't gonna give me his money. All right. So why are we trusting these these uh, random people with our money? Educate yourself and trust your, you, you can trust yourself with your own money. If you already take that money, and like uh, there's already a football player that's taking some of his contract money in uh, cryptocurrency. He has control of that money. That money is growing itself. He doesn't even have to pick an asset class. It's already there. So I think there's a uh, there's a lot of really cool movement um, towards allowing us to be independent and and eliminate the uh, the middleman. All right. And so that's the benefit of all this technology, right? Is it's giving you the ability to increase your wealth, but it's up to you to do it, mm -hmm. right? And there's people taking advantage of it, and that wealth gap is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And so I just urge all of you, just just, just invest, just do it. You know what I mean? It's really not that hard. Um, if you start on Coinbase or, or Crypto.com, just so you know, the only reason why I rec uh, recommend Coinbase is because they just give you free money. Yeah. I buy everything through Crypto.com. Yeah. Right? So Crypto.com is, is the one that I prefer, but... Unfortunately, they don't they don't pay you to learn. So that's the one thing I do like about yeah. Coinbase is they have these little, like I said, one to three minute long videos. You watch them, they pay you. I take that money, send it to Crypto.com. Yep. Bada bing, bada boom. Reinvest it. Um, yeah, just get started, man. That's that's that is the uh, the advice of the day. I appreciate you all listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll put some links below in the description box. But please like, subscribe, share. Um, if we didn't make sense, we apologize. Leave some comments and let us know how we can um, make your your time a, a little little better here uh, with our videos, and we can actually provide more uh, usable content. So for episode number one, man, it, iron does sharpen iron. Surround yourself with positive people, like-minded people. Let's get this together. There's no reason why we can't share information and uh and and best practices um there's no reason every day um try to educate yourself learn something new and instead of getting together and and having beers or wine or whiskey and talking about what happened on instagram and what so-and-so is wearing and watching a tv show turn off the tv talk to each other and let's talk about how I can help Theo be a better Theo and how Theo can help me be a better me. And, and let's, let's, let's do just that. normalize talking about money, right? Let's just normalize talking about money and let's normalize wanting everyone to win, right? Yeah. Because 
uh, I think that's one of the biggest things that, that holds us back is when we see someone successful, we kind of want to hate on them. Mm-hmm. It's like their shine doesn't make us shine any less. It's like when I see a successful person, when I see Nigel, I say, thank you, Nigel. Thank you for being successful, right? Thank you for, for being the right role model. I think that's a lot of our problems is uh, actually not. I was thinking about that today. It was like growing up, man, I didn't really have a dad. And it was like, dude, I, I, I look up to Ice-T and Ice Cube and, and Tupac and, and Master P, right? Though, those were my role models. And I was thinking about the rap game today. And mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, what if, what if I had Takashi 6 ix 9 <laughs> You know what I mean? What if, like, you know what I mean? No, nothing against his music, but I'm just talking about him as a character. There was a, a big difference between yeah. a Tupac and a Takashi 6 9 There's a big difference between an Ice Cube and a Master P and a Little Yachty. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, uh, man, I don't even know why I just brought that up. But <laughs> anyways. That's... No, it's just about surrounding yourself with positive people and, and trying to learn something new that's going to assist you and thanking, the, you know, the, the the other person for being successful. Well, yeah, yeah. So that's my point was if I, if there, if there wasn't a Tupac, I, I, I probably wouldn't be who I'd be, right? If all I had to listen to was Little Yachty and 6 9 God knows where I'd be. So, so definitely choose your sources of information. It has nothing to do with their music. I'm just talking about as, as a role model, right? Mm-hmm. We, we usually look up to the actors and celebrities, and I, yeah. I guess we were just fortunate to have LL Cool J. <laughs> 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 all right, well, I apologize for the background noise. We are outside. Um, my wife is working inside because, you know, some of us have to work from home. We're working from the backyard. But uh, love y'all. Like, subscribe, share, and I'm going to put a video here at the end, uh, a, a playlist, so you can listen to all the other things that we've talked about in the past. Um, stay tuned for more, baby. All right.